Yo guys, Theo here on Common Sense. Comfort is the topic of the day. Do not confuse comfort with happiness. It's numbness. It's a deceiver. It's a distraction. It makes you feel as if you're happy with how things are because it feels that way in this moment, but it's actually getting in the way of what would make you truly happy, most happy of all. Because so many people do this to varying degrees, you know. It's so easy for humans to choose what feels best in this moment and then making justifications for it. Some people even know that that's what they're doing when they're telling other people why, the, uh, why they're doing something. And some people are completely oblivious to it. So take myself, for instance. I used to really think that um, eating a pizza, a steka, uh, from the local Turk pizza, pizzeria, <laughs> was my favorite sweets will understand um, eating pizza smoking weed uh, drinking beer I really thought that was something I mm, this means a lot to me like I don't know I want to do this you know I like doing this I, it feels so good to do it thing is yeah it felt good in a moment but why did I have to do that why did I have to do that there was a void there was something wrong because you don't need to do these things because we all know what does this lead to? You get fat, unhealthy, you damage your organs, you get worse energy, um, you get lethargic. All those things happen from these things. We all know. People are, have a different degree of, uh, you know, awareness of, about how these things affect you. But no one thinks that this is actually good for me, you know. But we make up this excuse, you know, but I want this. Because it's more comfortable than facing the fact that shit, something is so wrong with me that I need these escapes just to feel good. I would not need these things. If I did a whole lot of other things that aren't as comfortable in this moment, I would be feeling so good that I don't really need these things. So for me, I'm the lucky one because I use these different copes like weed, alcohol, junk food, porn, watching... TV series all night, all day, being on the internet, uh, all day, playing video games, doing these kinds of things by myself or with friends, trying to hook up, going partying, you know. Thing is, I'll just turn around here. It's not going to be good. I walk there and I'm just out for the video anyway. Yeah, so I escaped for years. I was really a person. I'm going to tell you why I'm the lucky one and why I have a message to you that never was as far gone as me. I... For almost as long as I can remember, I dealt with anxiety and depression to varying degrees. And it just got worse as I got older. And that's why I developed all these coping mechanisms, you know. Escape, the terror. I know many times when I felt anxious. I wanted to meet people and like drink and smoke weed and do all the bullshit stuff to just forget, escape it. And I would tell myself that this is something I want to do. But obviously it was something I had to do that's annoying my phone went from 15 percent to dying on me and i refused to record a video online so i went to charge and now i'm back but anyway what i was saying is that uh, i had to use those things in the sense that something was off i had to deal with it somehow i didn't know any other way or the ways i did know i hid away from with comfort and so i'm the lucky one because all these years of uh, using the comfortable option to hide away something else my pain was too big. It didn't hold up anymore. It exploded. All the discomfort I'd been avoiding for years exploded, condensed into a few months in the expression of daily panic attacks that were so intense that thoughts of ending it all, uh, committing suicide, was something I had to deal with on a daily basis. So going through that, fast forward, confronting all that, choosing to go to all these situations that gave me panic, because I knew it's either killing myself or living as a shut-in for the rest of my life or facing it. Those are the options. Finally, after having done so much chosen adversity, going and facing the panic, didn't feel like it was getting better at all. Finally, it did. And that's when the coin fell down, as we say in Swedish. Poletten fell near. I realized that, ah, what I've been doing up until this point is I've been doing what feels good and nice in the moment, but I gradually just, I'm borrowing from the future and I did this and eventually hit rock bottom and it was now that I did the opposite I more and more not at the start for the panic but I started doing my best to avoid the alcohol and staying up late all the shit that I knew would feed into the anxiety and panic attacks it was finally 
facing, choosing this comfort that made me the most comfortable I had ever been. A lot of other problems I had were immediately alleviated through that process. And from that point, I chose to face the discomfort, the difficult, as I say. Started with a training, you know, it was much worse back then. Uh, everything new to human always is new habits, but especially thing like training actually hurts more in the muscle, you get more sore, you're more stiff, all that. And following a better diet, avoiding junk food, and uh, alcohol, which is the discomfort of you want to do it. It would feel that it would taste good, but you have to stick with the boring foods, right? And then since that point, I've just added on more stuff. Fasting, cold showers, cold baths, saunas, meditation, and just facing, difficult, just looking for discomfort in general, because I've seen this pattern now. What feels good in the moment is not what leads to what would feel the best of all in the end. And so why I'm saying I'm lucky is that People that grind and say that don't smash into the bottom like that, they might not notice. They might not notice what they're hiding, you know, the dreams they are giving up on. Like, they're gonna, there's gonna come a point then in life when you realize that shit, I, I've been telling myself, for instance, I don't need to be fit, but I always wanted to be fit. I always wanted to look like that, or that, that job, that passion I wanted to follow. I wanted, and I've been wasting my life working at this job that I hate. And so on, you know, that's going to be so much more painful in the end. If you come to that point and it's like, it's too late, I have messed up, my life is almost over and now I understand this. And that is my message, that is why I'm hoping to bring either to people that are close to the bottom uh, or, or has hit it and not find the strategies like I did, or the people that aren't close but, you know, resonate with something I say. And I want you to realize you have to do this. Please stop shying away from it. Like there are so many, uh, you know, it's the physical things are, the, you know, diet and training is what a lot of people flee from. No, no, it's worth it for me to eat junk food. No, no, I like drinking beer. It's too important. It's worth it for me. I oh, know I don't really like training. I don't really care about my looks. It's such bullshit. You know, do you know how many guys that have kind of out of nowhere, if they start talking about training with me, say, that, oh, but I wouldn't want to look like you. And it's like, okay, well, why did you have to say that then? You know, you're apparently thinking about it. It's again comfort. It's a much more comfortable story to tell yourself that, no, I don't even, I'm happy. I don't even want to look that way. Then realizing, shit, I'd like to be like that. And I'm so far from it. I'm a little fat piece of shit that's uncomfortable to have to face about yourself, right? But it's so much more. That's what I uh, learned uh, too through this journey. Um, it's to relationships, like even friend relationships where I, I've had a hard time speaking out, but when I feel like I get mis mistreated, then I always bring more, you know? As I, uh, but it's more comfortable because there are still something, apparently, uh, uh, something good about the relationship, right? Because you hold on. And so, because you want that, you don't want to interrupt that, you choose not to have difficult situations. This has happened both with friend relationships and even with my girl, you know? Like, it's, it's uncomfortable when everything is nice, you know? And either if I have to bring up something that maybe I'm insecure about, so it just feels difficult for me to say, or something that I know will make her feel bad, make her feel criticized and attacked, you know, it's much more comfortable to just keep the peace, not even talk about it, you know, right? But it has to be done. It's the same with, you know, if you're not happy with your job, like uh, telling yourself the story that oh, uh, no, no, but it's, I don't have to work with my passion. I don't have to do something. I, it's good. I like the pay, you know, I like the pay, whatever. But <laughs> the, you're fleeing from the fact that there is something. If you have to tell these stories too much, you, know, if you find yourself always saying this, like, ah, it's not the most fun job in the world, but at least the pay is good, you know, then there is something you'd rather do. And it's just more uncomfortable. Uh, shit, I, I've wasted all this time at this place that I don't like. Here's the good news, though. There isn't, there, there, it might be too late for certain things, but it's never too late for things to get better. It's like even with exercise and um, a better diet, you know, I have had clients that, start, that started with, that are like 60 years old. Plus. Like I've heard about older people, but a lot can be done there still, you know? And, you know, if you wanted to travel, but you got the kids, for instance, you wanted to move somewhere and live somewhere else. Well, when your kids are all grown up, you can still do it as an old person. There's like, it's not too late. It's not too late, but it will be, the, the, the more you wait, some things it's gonna be too late for. That's the point though. Comfort is the 
happiness killer. It's the cloak, it makes you feel. Uh, feel like you're happy, but you're not. You're just not. It's, you, this is something, you know, the, I want you to see, we're coming to an end here, but the polarity of life. Well, there's always like a good and bad version of a thing, like a good and toxic version. Like, of course, discomfort could be bad. Like, there's a recent pain that tells us something. Too much pain. Like, um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's not that it's just good because it's painful, but facing something that feels tough to the right degree, that will alleviate, make you stronger, make you feel better in the end. And, of course, it's good to be comfortable, like, when you're about to sleep, when you're going to recover. It's best if it's a cool room and a good bed or whatever, you know. But it's this polarity, you have to see, see the reason, and it of, very often it is that, that the thing that seems that it's not the best, because it's like uncomfortable in the moment, for instance, it is the best in the end. And the thing that might feel like it's the best in the moment, it isn't. The polarity of life, guys. Breathe in, breathe out. Wave come, wave go. Parasympathetic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system. Good and evil. I could go on. The polarity of life. Choose discomfort now the right kind of discomfort to be the best, the most comfortable in the end. Please leave a comment. What did you think? Please like. Oh, uh, we have the Christmas sale going still for a few days on my coaching programs. So the, the contact information, DM on Instagram or email, it's in the description. But please like and comment. It all helps to support the channel, so I appreciate it a lot. Please subscribe for more content about fitness, fasting, losing weight, building muscles, self-improvement, stoicism, mental health, philosophy, mindset. It's a mindset, guys. All right.